Hey everybody, day three of Soy Week is upon us. And I suppose I should give a little update on my condition. Well, I don't feel bad. I'm not in any pain, no stomach pain. Um, maybe a little achy here and there, but you know, it might just be, you know, a little day-to-day -day aches. My shoulders are in my back or something like that. It's no big deal. And I find it's unrelated to the experiment. What I do think is related to, to the experiment is uh, the bubbling in my stomach. Now, I don't know if it's just my stomach getting used to this kind of stuff. But I really do find it strange is that my stomach doesn't growl after I haven't eaten for a long time, you know? It growls immediately after I drink one of these things. In fact, it still doesn't taste good. In fact, I can still, you, can, you might even be able to hear it. Look, it's already starting. I don't think you'll be able to hear it with the quality of the microphone, or my cell phone, but still. That's crazy. It makes my stomach growl. I don't know what that is. What's weird is, so we're now 48 hours more or less into the experiment. And I'm telling you something. I have had no motion um, out my rear end at all. I thought I'd like squirt liquid or something. Nah, not at all. My body's just sucking up everything there is and only leaving the liquid behind. I'm drinking good amounts of water, a lot of water, which I do normally anyways. Um, I don't feel any more tired than normal. I don't feel sick. And I really don't feel hungry, although I'm not even drinking that much of this stuff. Really, you're supposed to drink four or five bottles of these if you're going to only drink these in a day to get a full 2,000 calories. I'm only taking in 1,200 calories a day, which is a bit of an extreme diet, but I don't know. It hasn't really affected the way I feel in pretty much any way um, other than the bubbling cauldron that my stomach becomes. It's, it's all, it's all the same. Um, I've flushed all right-wing media out of my life. Um, I was watching episodes of Steven Universe and Rick and Morty. My internet was so bad I had to quit that because the streaming services that you have to go to to find those shows um, don't run very well on bad internet. Um... What I will say about Steven Universe is, I don't really get it as a show. Um, there's something missing for me. It, it reminds me of a kid's cartoon show. It, 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 has, it has a sense of humor that's kind of like awkward humor, kind of like The Office it made me think of. But like The Office was so big, everybody was copying The Office just in terms of humor. Not necessarily kids' shows, though. Um... It's not like Spongebob humor. Um, oddly, even though the characters and the situations are very, are very bizarre indeed, the humor is not bizarre. The humor is not that, it's not like oddball, it's not, um, it's, it's just normal human interactions is what it's based on. And one out of every six jokes I might find humorous and I might even chuckle at. What's weird is the pacing and the timing, which I got the sense of as the episodes went on, they got a better sense of the timing of the jokes and jokes became funnier. Sometimes the joke is simply just holding on to a goofy face that one of the characters is making. And I'm like, oh, that's for kids. 
maybe the time, the pacing of, of cartoons is, is definitely, uh, and this is something I noticed 10, 12 years ago when I stopped watching cartoons right around the age of 12 or 13. Um, last, last kids show I ever watched was Class of 3000, if you remember it, on Cartoon Network. And um, that was just because it was band kids and I was a band kid. But from then on, I was watching Futurama and Family Guy and stuff like that, if any, animated shows. Futurama especially. It's the number one, number one show. But the thing is, what I noticed is from the shows that I, that I watched as a kid, like Fairly Odd Parents and SpongeBob and Dexter's Lab and Powerpuff Girls, we all know them if you're, if you're my age, is that the newer ones, like, Adventure Time is the big one, and other ones of that, of that sort of variety. Is that the pacing is like crazy, and the situations are nonsensical. I mean, SpongeBob, the premise is kind of nonsensical. You know, sea creatures, anthropomorphic sea creatures that live regular everyday lives. But the actual like situations and the lessons are, are normal. Whereas the, the lessons of Steven Universe are kind of mixed for me. Because on one hand, they want to show that the strong, independent woman, women that don't need no man can save the world together. The, the trio of... I don't care that they're not actually women in the show. They're women. That the trio of women that are the gems... Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl, I think are their names... They want to show that they're all powerful. They can do anything they put their mind to. They can achieve anything. But they fail. Like every episode, they fail. And they have to resort to this little chubby autistic kid who, who, doesn't, who doesn't know anything. He doesn't even know how to use his powers. And yet he always saves the day. Or I just watched an episode where they didn't even save the day. They failed at the end. They failed at what they wanted to accomplish. And yet, at the end, they're sitting smiling and laughing. There's no negative emotional reaction about that. The only negative emotions in that show last for but a whisper, what, but a brief moment. And one of the moral lessons I found particularly, like, almost insulting was if, there, if, if every pork chop was perfect, there would be no hot dogs or something. And I was like... And then the guy's, and then his dad's van gets washed out in the sea. And Steve is like, oh, if, there's a, if there were no, if every pork chop was perfect, there'd be no hot dogs. And the dad's like, I live in there. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You can't just excuse away any mistake and any failure as well, you know? Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. That's a terrible life lesson. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why the strong, powerful women who don't need no man have a boy that solves their problems or doesn't solve their problems, but it doesn't matter anyways because they're happy at the end of the episode and everything goes back to normal anyways. It's a directionless show, man. Um, I guess people just think it's pretty looking. People read into it the social messages that they want to see in it. And yes, there are definitely many coded social messages in there. The idea that the three women of non-traditional family structure are raising this boy. Why the hell this dad doesn't raise his son? Yeah, he lives in a van, but I mean, come on. Can't get something together here? It just doesn't, it just doesn't jive, man. I just don't get it. Um... And I'm kind of glad my internet's too slow for me to keep watching these episodes. Because I really don't want to see more. I, and I don't think there is more to the show. I've actually watched reviews on the show before this week. I basically said every episode's the same anyways. So it's like, what the heck is going on here? Why is this show so beloved? Why does it have like a 10 out of 10 on, I, on IMDb? It's just... People like it. We're almost at 10 minutes. I do want to say real quickly that I did try to watch MSNBC News, and I got two and a half minutes into one video before I couldn't take it anymore. They were just so wrong, I had to turn it off. <laughs> no, I haven't watched any right-leaning media at all, but I am watching stuff on Netflix that is either like politically neutral or something else, because Netflix has better streaming. Anyways, see you tomorrow.